our Evangelist Mentor Academy. Today we are investigating what it means to become a full-time evangelist. I have my two evangelist friends here. My friend on my right here is Aaron Krause. He's from uh, upstate Michigan. He's down here in Philadelphia with me today. Helped me take the gospel out to the streets, Philadelphia. And he's a blessing to me. And on my left here is my evangelist friend and good friend, Sam Fry. Evangelist in New York City and all across America and other overseas countries. Sam, how many years have you been involved with evangelism? It's uh, 39 years. So it'll be 40 years in June. So finishing up 39 years. Aaron, how many years have you been in evangelism? So my first time hitting the streets randomly was back in 2005. So that's when you consider your time starting evangelism. Okay, so that's uh, 10, 15, 16. And I started preaching January of 1981. Although I wasn't full-time, I was preaching everywhere I could. So that's when I knew I was called as an evangelist. Being called as an evangelist in 1981 brings me up to 41 years. And so that's uh, 57 and 41 is 98. 98. So we have 98 years of experience of evangelism. Basically, a century of evangelism experience here with us today. And the ideas that are behind to become a full-time evangelist. Not just an evangelist as in like I'm preaching the gospel. But as a full-time career evangelist. That's what we're really looking at today. You know, coming into the Evangelist Mentor Academy. This is like private stuff. It's not private as you can't ever share it with anyone. But this is private, intricate details on developing not the next steps, but these steps in how to get involved with, with full-time evangelism. You know, we're going to talk about a couple topics here and some things that we are dear to our heart and have some insights and some wisdom on. And I would hope that you would take notes and that you could apply these things to your life and to your ministry and to your understanding and knowledge. And hopefully you can become a full-time evangelist. No one's going to sit you down and say, hey, this is how you do it. Who has time to do it? How are we going to give you 98 years of experience just on a video? You know, we're never going to be able to truly fully give you all the insights on that. We just want to give you some deep level knowledge that only true open air or true evangelists will understand in giving the gospel to be able to help you. You know, if I sat down a full-time pastor here, he would probably give us most of the information about really what it means to be a full-time professional calling of ministry. But evangelism is a complete different subject. So, you know, and really when you think about evangelists, that's a difficult calling. And the reason why is because today our culture has created a, a repelling to the idea of evangelists. But if God has called you to be an evangelist, and if you really want to be an evangelist, and you know in your heart of hearts that evangelism is 100% you, then these topics that we're going to explain right now in these next view videos will be able to help you get an insight and a grasp on that. True evangelists do open-air evangelists because that's where the unsaved are at. They're in the open air. It's not like you're going to go to church and lead a whole bunch of saved people to the Lord. they got to be unsaved. And so evangelists work outside the church, which is another form of saying open air. Now, open air has some specific ideas. Sam can give us all about that. So all evangelists have to have the love of open air evangelism. What do you think about what I just said there, Sam? Yeah, I do open air evangelism because you can't fish in a bathtub. So many of the lost are out in the streets. Now, I have personal friends who are itinerant evangelists that go into church after church because uh, contrary to popular belief, churches are not absolutely full of saved people. The best of our fundamental churches uh, have many people who yet do not know the Lord. In fact, one of the most dangerous places I think you can be as an unsaved person is to be a regular member of a, of a fundamental church because people will assume that you know the Lord by association. But uh, my experience has been many people in the best of our uh, local assemblies don't know Christ uh, for one reason or another. And so there is a harvest to be reaped, even uh, the local church bodies. But the vast majority of people uh, that are without the Lord uh, are out there in the highways and byways. Uh, 
Uh, they're out there in the workaday world outside the walls of the physical church building, and uh, we certainly need to go after them as well. So, Sam, tell us where you're from and, and uh, who you are and what you're doing and what organization you're working with and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm uh, based in Pottersville, New York. do most of my work in New York City, but uh, a lot of work uh, from town to town, Albany, Syracuse, Utica, uh, you know, uh, down to uh, Philly here a number of weeks a year if you added it up. Uh, but my first love is really New York City, and uh, that's where the Lord called me initially. But I'm up to go share the gospel anywhere in the world where people need the Lord. I had the privilege to represent the Lord Jesus in uh, Asia and uh, over in Eastern Europe uh, a good number of times as well. All right, and my name is Evangelist Tony Brizzo. I've been in the ministry 41 years with Youth Action Ministries. And we're based right outside South Side of Philadelphia. And we do open air evangelism, pulpit evangelism, youth, especially ministry evangelism. And all these things create titles of categories of areas that I do evangelism in as an evangelist. So I'm an evangelist. And obviously, first love is open air because that's where the unsafe people are. And I've been working with youth 41 years, training them to how they can do evangelism on missions trips, reaching them how to do you know, reaching young people in the inner city. I've pastored several churches, one in Upper Darby. I was their interim pastor, one in Morton, Pennsylvania. I was associate pastor there for 25 years. In Salem, Virginia, I was there for several years, associate pastor. And of course, my home church where I first got saved at, I was a youth leader, minister there. These are all the churches that I've been involved in on a full-time professional basis. And, of course, just doing evangelism as an evangelist alongside with all these churches at the same time. So I've always been wearing different hats. But evangelism has always been my forte and my desire and my goals and my calling. So sometimes you wear a hat of developing and maturing and mentoring in a local church to become an evangelist. And you learn about youth ministries or children's ministries or adult ministries. And you... Put that in your toolbox on different ways of ministering to different age groups. So as an evangelist, if you want to become an evangelist, I would recommend that you join a good established church. It doesn't have to be super large, not small, but something where people can pray around with you, pray behind you, pray for you, and bless your ministry. But then you also want to find a, a local church where you can be like, maybe not a member, but a resident uh, a servant there that you could help, um, some kind of church where, you know, they desperately need help and you can cut your teeth on how to do ministry, all the ministry you want, all the youth ministry, all the associate ministry, all the pastor ministry, all the evangelism ministry and different things. So uh, a small church is extremely important to learn how to do different levels of ministry, but a, a good sized church, not ultra big, but a good sized church is important for your prayer support and your financial support and and for great encouragement because as an evangelist you will be challenged there will be dark days that could discourage you you know i was talking to several pastors saying and this is what i hear from different pastors we've had 10 missionaries come off the field in the last like 24 months you know what that tells me number one people are being beat up and they're coming off the mission field the COVID and the pandemic has really finances and life situations hard. But the other side of that coin, churches have mission support to give to missionaries because a lot of them are coming off the field. And churches have uh, some some searching to do to find missionaries so that they can support to replace them. I mean, for a church to say to me last month that we lost 11 missionaries in the last two years. So we just took on 11 missionaries. But that tells me going forward in our day 2022 and going forward for the next decade we live in a very difficult society to make it difficult for missionaries to exist and evangelists as i use the word missionary but an evangelist missionary you want to raise support like a missionary so you know you you, you want to be an evangelist missionary and really missionary is a contemporary word that we use for the last 200 years 250 years almost not quite since 1800 sending out american missionaries and the united kingdom was sending out uh missionaries for 100 years before america was and um and so that's a contemporary word but really that's not a bible word that's not a biblical word 
you know, the biblical word is, you know, a person taking the gospel to another land. You can call that a church planner. You can call that a pastor. You can call that an elder, presbytery. But really, he has to go with the spirit of evangelists. And, and Paul challenged Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. So even if you go as a missionary church planner, you have to do the work of evangelists. You have to get involved with evangelism. And your, your calling is going to be evangelism. But those that stay right with evangelism and maybe plant a church and move on or maybe go to a mission field and that's your mission field and stay there and move on. I don't know, you know. Do you think missionary is a contemporary word, not in the Bible? And really they're doing the work of evangelism. Missionary, yeah. If you go to most missiological uh, departments of a Bible college, uh, the definition of a missionary is you go cross-cultural and or cross-linguistically to a place to share the gospel gospel of Christ. <clears throat> so, for instance, I'm an evangelist, first and foremost. And biblically, I'm an evangelist. The evangelist is, the, is given uh, to the local assembly to uh, equip the saints to do the work of the ministry so that the body of Christ is built up in that locale. And uh, so I'm certainly an evangelist. But when I need to use Spanish in order to communicate with people, uh, even in New York City, even without going outside our U.S. borders, in a sense, I'm there as a missionary. I have to change the language to them to accommodate where they're coming from uh, many times if they don't know English. Uh, and or when I go overseas to another nation that's going over national boundaries. So in that sense, I'm a missionary. But most of what I do would be as an evangelist, I would say, biblically and even practically. Uh, but uh, when I do break over those borders, then that's uh, being a missionary. I'm very happy and privileged to be, you know, have the honor of being considered to be an evangelist, biblically speaking. Because you can be a missionary and, uh, and support the work of the gospel and maybe not directly be sharing the gospel individually in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, though any good missionary will be doing that. Uh, maybe not formally or as part of their job description, but as a believer in Christ. It's all of our responsibility to share Christ to anyone around us. You know. I would add to that, uh, the closest thing that we have in the Bible, um, as far as the Greek words are concerned, when it comes to missionary, apostle, and you think of like the apostle Paul, he was a sent one. He was sent out to the Gentiles. But also you look at the apostle Peter, he was sent to the Jews. So while on one hand, uh, you know, historically, Missionaries are sent cross-culturally, uh, not necessarily always the case um, as far as the biblical, uh, the biblical framework goes. But uh, it's just the idea of someone who is sent out for the express purpose of raising up disciples who will raise up more disciples and uh, uh, form themselves into a local church throughout, throughout the globe. And so as an evangelist, you know, it's a, a bearer of good news. So in order for you to raise up a disciple, they've got to become born again. And how do they become born again? By hearing the gospel. And so how are God's people mobilized and equipped to bring the gospel to people? It's through the evangelist who lives by example and also um, raises up others uh, to bring that message out. Because without the gospel, um, you're, what are you sent out for? Where, what's your point? And so the main focus, it all pivots off of the message and the response to it. I believe, too, that, as you said, you know, uh, apostle, I think we are apostles in a very, very, very real way um, with that mission that we are, to, we are to carry. Small A, not capital A, I believe. Uh, the apostles, they all saw the risen Christ. Uh, we are apostles, messengers, same word from which we get mess, uh, angel, uh, the idea of being a messenger, a carrier of that. Okay, so Apostle Sam is telling us that uh, we're all angels and apostles. All right. God bless you all. The Greek language tells us that. I was just realizing. So I just want to say thank you for watching our video. We're going to have several more videos here on how to become an evangelist. And we'll take you into this deep dive of understanding the behind-the-scenes development of becoming an evangelist. Thank you. God bless you. Talk to you soon.